Hey guys, so in today's video, uh, I want to give credit to BM on YouTube because they dropped a comment and I think this is a, uh, a good video we can walk through to like explain how to get this done. So really what we want to do today is um, BM said they have a data set in Excel where they've got multiple columns, but the columns are just repeats and the repeats are only to break out specific dates or specific periods of times. So to add more color to that, in this first section here, we've got a date, a SKU, and then unit sold, revenue, cost, and margin to that particular date and SKU. Then in this next section here in like the salmon color, we've got the same columns repeating, date, SKU, unit sold, revenue, cost, margin, so on and so forth. Um, the columns repeat because really what's different here is the date. So all these metrics are for a different date for that specific SKU. And likewise, this third section, we've got another date that is that has columns descriptive to the sales metrics to that date. So these columns really aren't unique. They're just differentiated by date. What we want to do is we want to take all these units sold values and fit them under one unit sold column. Likewise, we want to take all the revenue values, fit them all under one revenue column, so on and so forth. So we're going to do that today using Nime. So to get started, I already set up the nodes because there's quite a few steps involved. Um, so I'll just walk you through how to configure each node and why we're configuring the node a particular way so that you understand the concept and can apply it in your work. So the first things first is we're reading in the Excel file with this Excel reader. I have a video on this so you guys can, you know, if you haven't read in a file before, you'll be able to pick it up pretty quickly. But anyways, what's important here is that if you look at the naming convention of the Excel reader or NIME, for our duplicate columns, take for example SKU, NIME will append a number to the end of the column name. So this is the first SKU column. Afterwards, NIME saw this is a duplicate SKU column, so it names it SKU number one. And then the third section, the SKU is another duplicate, so it names it SKU number two. So just something to keep in mind because eventually we're gonna wanna clean up these names and get rid of the number one, the number two, et cetera. So our first step after reading in the data through Excel is to grab an unpivoting node. And the goal of the unpivoting node is to get everything, all the data into two columns. So to do that, we're gonna configure this node so that we have all of our columns listed in the green box of the value section, AKA this top half, leave all our columns in this green section. And then from the bottom section where it says the retained columns here, we don't want any retained columns. So we want all of our columns under the retained section to be in the red box because we don't want to retain them. When you first open up this node, you'll probably see the uh, the default status of the node is to have everything in this green section. You can move it all over to the red section by double clicking one at a time or simply hitting the double left arrow like so. Okay, so for our unpivoting, leave all of our columns in the green section for the values and all of our columns in the red section for the retained. So we can hit OK, we can hit uh, Execute, and your data set should look like so. So here we've got our column names all in one column, and we've got our column values all in another column. So you can see date, and then the value under date, unit sold, the value under unit sold, so on and so forth. Um, so now that we've got that set up, the next step is to clean up this data set a little bit. And what I mean by that is we're gonna clean up the, the column names again, to remove the number one and the number two. We want all of our unit sold columns to say unit sold. We don't want unit sold number one, and we don't want unit sold number two. So we're gonna clean this up next. We're also gonna convert all of our column values into string values. Right now you can see it's like an unknown value, and that's simply because we've got dates mixed in with strings, mixed in with numbers, from integers to doubles, um, so Nime doesn't really know what to do with, with the, with the, I guess, character type for this column. So we're just going to tell it to default this as a string for the time being. 
And we're going to do both of those steps using a column expression node. So if we double click into the column expression node, let's do the easy step first. So we're going to say for column values, replace the column with itself, but then set the type up here to string. So when you first go into a column expression, if we look that up, we're going to say, Oh, give me one sec. We're going to say double click the first step. We'll hit this plus sign and we're going to say, click on replace column because what we want to do is replace the column and we're going to replace column values with itself. And we can say replace it with itself by going to the expression editor, clicking on column and double clicking this column values option. So now what we're saying here is replace the column column values with the value of whatever is in column values as it stands. The reason we're doing this is because now we want to be able to set the type in this option box over here. And we're simply going to keep the type set to string. So right now, remember nine doesn't know what type the column values column is. So it's got the question mark here. We're simply saying replace it with the self and set the type to string can hit evaluate you see we get data populating here so what we're going to do is we're going to hold control hit ok to apply the settings and execute it once oh well in mac it's command windows it's control we'll look at the output table and now you can see the column values has the string it no longer has the question mark so now everything here is uh defined as a string so we've got that first part cleaned up the next part is we've got to take we've got to clean up those column names um, values aka get rid of the number one the number two basically everything that's in a parentheses or everything after the opening parentheses and we'll do so using this um, syntax over here and what we've got going on here is two uh, different formulas so i'll break it out a little bit but basically the first formula is this regex replace and what we're saying is we're going to replace um, stuff within this column using a regex expression or a regular expression. Um, to keep it short, I'm going to give you the answer here. You want to use this expression in the regex re replace formula. The regex replace formula is basically defined here. So if you click on function, then you go to string type and you scroll down to regex replace. You click on it once and it says here the definition of the formula and what it does. But essentially it has three arguments. The first argument is what we've defined as the column column names. So we're saying for the column column names, we're going to then go to the second argument for this column, find this regular expression pattern. So match this pattern. And once you match this pattern, replace it with this pattern. So what we're saying is in column names, find this pattern, which is basically saying find the opening parentheses and then anything after it. So once you find the opening parentheses and anything after it, replace it with this pattern, which is basically a double quote, which is basically replace it with nothing. So essentially we're deleting anything starting from the double quote and after. So that goes that that's the first function, the regex replace. Once we've got the regex replace um, executed, then what we want to do is we're going to nest the regex replace within a strip function. And what the strip function does is it basically removes the leading and trailing white spaces out of a particular um, column or a particular value. So what we're saying is whatever the answer to this regex replace is or whatever the output to it is, afterwards um, remove or strip the trailing and the leading white spaces in that output so that way we're removing anything from the opening parentheses to the end of the string and then we're also cleaning up any um, leading and trailing white spaces because we don't want those in there because we're, when we're working with text those leading and trailing white spaces make a difference um, in one thing being the same as something else or not so anyways, once we've got that defined, we're going to say 
put that output into a new column called test. And I'm putting that output into a new column so that we can then compare um, what the original column was to then what the new column is. All right, so finally we can hit evaluate just to make sure that our expression isn't erroring out in terms of a syntax error. Um, and we don't see any red text here saying, oh, we've got an error for this or that. So we know we're good to go. So we can hit okay, we can apply and then execute our node. And then this is what we get now, right? So now we've got, let me zoom in a little bit, gonna wrap these column headers. Oh, wrong way. So now we've got our column names, our original column names untouched, our column values. We can see now that it's defined as a string and now we have our new test column. So if we slide this test column over and compare it to our column names column, a lot of columns in this, uh, <laughs> that were in our vocabulary right now. Anyways, you can see we've got date, date, skew, skew, unit sold, unit sold, so on and so forth. But where our real manipulation happens is after this first set of the column names. Now we've got date number one under the original name, but under our test column, it's now set as date. Likewise with SKU, it's no longer SKU number one, now it's SKU. Unit sold number one is unit sold, so on and so forth. Unit sold number two is unit sold. Cost number two is cost. So what we did here is we basically convert, cleaned up these names to make them all fall under either date, SKU, unit sold, revenue, cost, or margin. There is no more differentiation between saying this is the this is the first date column, this is the second date column, and this is the third date column. Everything is either a date column, or a SKU column, or a revenue column, so on and so forth. Think of these; they're they're eventually going to be columns again, right? So now we know that they're all going to be the same here. Uh, so we've got that ready to go, so we can exit out of here. The last, the, not the last step, the second to last step is to now repivot those column names, except we're not going to repivot column names, the unclean column names. We're going to pivot the test column, which has our clean column names, All right? So let's head to our pivoting node. And in our pivoting node, the way we're going to set this up is we've got three tabs, the groups, the pivots, and then the manual aggregation. So the first set is to say the groups, we're gonna keep our row IDs as the value we keep under the groups. So just make sure you've got the row IDs over here on this green box, then go over to the pivots. And then under the pivots, we're gonna say pivot the test column. So remember the test column has our cleaned up column names. So we're gonna pivot the test column and then under manual aggregation, this is a very important um, step in how we set this up. We're going to take our column values, which we set to a default as a string. We're going to take the column values. We're going to move it over into the manual aggregation window by just double clicking or clicking, hitting add. And when we move it into there, we're going to say under the aggregation type, click on this and then go to list. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, create a list of all the values that match a specific row ID and a specific um, column under the test value. So to add more clarity to that, or to try to explain it a different way, we're gonna say, create a list. So pivot these unique values under test. So pivot the date, SKU, unit sold, revenue, cost, and margin and keep the row IDs as a column. But once you pivot these, then take the column values and make a list of each of each um, value that falls under the date. So for the date, you're gonna take 2023, 112, and then the next one in the list is gonna be 2023, 126, followed by 2023, 112, 2023, 119, 2023, 126, so on and so forth. Then under SKU, the list is gonna be ABC123, 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 DEF456, D 
PEF456. Then under the unit sold list, it's going to be 33, 50, 48, 41, so on and so forth through each of these columns. It's going to make a list. So let's run that and you'll see what the output looks like. So again, under groups, keep the row IDs, pivots, keep the test column, and then manual aggregation, set the column values, set it to list. The last step is for our pivot name under the column name section, excuse me, for the column name section, set it to the pivot name. Don't do the pivot name plus aggregation or aggregation plus pivot name, because then to make it look clean, you have to do um, a rename node after which is an extra step we can just literally handle it from within here. So set column name to pivot name and then aggregation name. You can set it to the aggregation method or the column name, then aggregation method. doesn't really matter here. We're going to hit OK and we're going to execute. And now let's look at our output. You want to look at the output of the pivot table. So the first selection here that says pivot table. So now look at what we've got here. Now we've got our unique columns. The last step is now to get these unique columns to populate rows for all the values in this list. So you can see under each unique column is a set um, list of different values. So the last step is to take these groupings within the list and ungroup it. So basically split these out into their own rows. So we can do that using the ungroup node. So under the ungroup node, we'll double click. And all we're going to do is we're going to say ungroup all of these columns. So ungroup the cost, date, margin, revenue, SKU, and unit sold column. Once that's set, um, we can hit OK and apply. The last step I like to set is to remove the selected collection columns. So we don't have, um, you know, the the list still next to it and then these in new outputs so i'll select remove that i'll hit ok we'll hit execute and now let's look at our output so now we've got let's zoom in a little bit and then wrap our column headers oh, where are we at all right so now we've got a date column a SKU column, a unit sold column, a revenue column, a cost column, and a margin column. And you can see now we've got our six unique columns and under each column, we now have our different um, dates. So if we sort this ascending, we've got everything specific to 1-12-2023 and then we've also got everything specific to 126 2023 and 119 2023. So we've gone from this initial data set, which was duplicating columns based off of uh, duplicating columns, but differenti differentiating values based off of different dates, to now everything is one succinct data table. Um, that's much easier to manage in terms of data manipulation um, and creating models or reporting, etc. Uh, so that's all there is to it. If you guys have any questions or anywhere that I moved too fast, or I might've been unclear, just drop a comment. I'll try to help you as best as I can. If not, like always drop a comment, which, or with something which you need help with that I can put a video together for you. Um, because if not, you know, my ideas aren't as great as what you guys are trying to do. Um, and that way also it's more engaging because, you know, you, you can relate to like, I can use this in my work type of thing. But anyways, like always hit the like button, share this with your data friends and hit the subscribe button. Um, and, you know, drop your comments. Let me know what you think. If not, I'll catch you on the next video.